Good afternoon, Devar Trust. I have uh, I had an idea while I was reading to just talk about the two witnesses. There will be two witnesses of uh, maybe Islam, if that is the Middle Eastern uh, religion that's the most dominant, I'll just say most dominant religion in the Middle East instead of saying the religion itself. So the most dominant religion in the Middle East will have two witnesses. There will be two false witnesses. One will be pretending to be Uh, they both will be pretending to be a messiah figure. The, uh, I got tremors today, neurological tremors, so please forgive any kind of shaking or trembling in my voice. The two witnesses of Yahweh, Shua Yu Elohim, the, the real two witnesses. And video is about there's there's two there's two churches the Church of Philadelphia and the Church of Smyrna that's a type of two witnesses and you have in chapter 4 verse 7 through 11 it talks about Elijah and Enoch as two witnesses. So we have Smyrna, Smyrna, we have the Church of Philadelphia, and we have these two witnesses, um, as in two persons, Elijah and Enoch. Then we have the two uh, sides of the same religion Shia and Sunni. And they have two witnesses, which are these two prophets. In their eyes, they're prophets and Messiah. They're Mahdi and their, their version of, uh, of uh, Jesus, Isha, Isha, Isa. Or Jesus. So where do where do I begin? I guess I start with the the false Messiah. The false Messiah is going to come and back up the false religion, which is what the Shia and Sunni believe. Isa is going to claim to be the Christian's Jesus. And he's going to tell the Pope, all the Catholics, all the Christians throughout the world that you need to convert to what the Mahdi says. Whatever the Mahdi says, that's what you need to do. So if you need to convert to Islam then you will convert to Islam. And the Pope, it seems to me the Pope and all these religious leaders, all these televangelists are going to say, that's the real Jesus. And it's not going to be the real Jesus. And everybody's going to say, is this, he's performing miracles. He's doing things like Jesus did. But he won't be able to raise the dead. Not for real anyway. He can fake like he is. And the two real churches, not not Shia and Sunni, but the two churches, Smyrna and Philadelphia, metaphorically, I guess you would say, um, the true believers and followers of Messiah Yeshua, who keep the 
Yahushua's commandments and the fruit of the Spirit and his name. And not a generic name like the name that was the the Catholics came up with was Jesus or Jesus. Jesus and eventually down into Yiddish, English, Jesus. There was no J until the 1540s. So there was not even a way to say Jesus or Jesus. It was always yeah or huh. And Jesus or Jesus or Jesus, just a silent J, like ha, huh, like jalapeno, Javier. Um, and a quick, quick lesson on the letter J is is, is an, a, two Arabic swords crossing each other makes a X. You take one of those Arabian swords away and you have a J which is just an Arabian sword. And so the letter J and X means war. It's, it's a war sword. It's death. You know, that's what the letter J and the letter X are. They're two Arabian cross swords or just one Arabian sword. And in the 1540s, a... Greco Roman Catholic priest decided to create a new letter and it was adopted and shortly, real shortly after that, the Society of Jesus, which is the Jesuit, the Knights of the Jesuit Order and the Catholic Church was created. And all kind of beliefs started coming into the head of the church after that and they started doing away with the name of the the, the the messiah's real name it's not jesus or jesus and it definitely isn't isa it's yahweh shua yahweh Elohim. short version of that will be yeshua or yehu yeho shua yahashua or yahawashai or I say Yahweh Shua, I-E-U-E-S-H-U-A-I, Yahweh Shua. Back to the two witnesses. Since the Roman Catholic Church has changed so many things, and so all these televangelists and these modern day churches, splinters of the Catholic Church, they believe such doctrine that is not biblical. They're so far out there that they will, when their church leaders, like when the Pope, if the Pope ever becomes a Muslim, and all the televangelists start to become Islamic, or say it's all right to follow this Islamic Jesus called Isa, then it's over. It's, it really is over. It's like there's two or three years left. And this fake Jesus, this fake Isa, is going to perform miracles and draw in Christians. Now, there are already two billion Muslims. Two billion Muslims. Think about that. How many Catholics are there? There's 2 billion Catholics or a little more than 2 billion in the splintering Catholics, which are non-denominational denominationals put together. You probably have 2 to 3 billion. So Christendom are fake Christians. So if most of those fake Christians switch to Islam because the Pope and their evangelist, their church leaders tell them that this is the real 
Jesus, the Islamic Isa, is the real Jesus. We need to do what he says and convert to Islam. Now, that sounds absurd. It really does. Just coming out of my mouth and entering into my own ears is like, that's absurd. That will never happen. But if people miss this so-called rapture, they're going to think that this is the real Messiah because they're unlearned. They never learn for themselves the truth by reading and studying the, the scripture, all the scripture, even the Apocrypha and the Pseudepigrapha. They never went past a, a skin-deep derma. They just never went past the, the first layer of skin. They never let it go down into the bone and research, research, research. They drew a line and said, I won't go any further past this line. I'm, I'm content. And the name Jesus itself is, was created in the 1540s by the Roman Catholic Church. The real name, if you want to just say a short version, Yeshua. Yeah, I used to say Jesus. I used to say Yeshua. Now I say Yehweh Shuai because that's where the level I'm at where I think I can understand his name. It may be Yehawashai. It may be Yehusha or Yehusha or Yehu Shua or Shuai. But right now, the best I can do is Yehweh Shuai and that's that's where I'm at. And I'm hoping and praying that the real name is revealed, not just to me, but to everyone, so we'll call on the original, wonderful name of the Messiah. Cry out, Father and Messiah. But to say a Greco-Roman name that was made up, to get people to stop calling on the real name and not putting down the Messiah. If you say Jesus and you're going to stick to that name, well, that's on you. But this is where it's wrong to call on, on the name. Because when you say the name... Jesus, Jesus, Yeshua, and then you can just do whatever you want and whenever you want. And you can be totally lawless because your Savior is the lawless one. And what does that mean? That means that your Savior, whatever his name is, preaches and teaches you don't have to keep the Torah or the Ten Commandments, or the fruit of the Spirit. You can do whatever you want, and just call on the name of Jesus, or Jesus, and you're saved. Well, that doesn't make any sense. If you're calling on the name, Yehoshu, or Yeshua, or Je Jesus, or Jesus, and you don't believe what he said by keeping his commandments and the fruit of the Spirit, then are you really saved? I mean, you have no characteristics of the Savior, of the real Messiah. Your characteristics are, are of the lawless one. And there's a lawless one coming. His name is Isa, and he will claim to be the Christian Jesus. And the lawless one will say that Muhammad and the Mahdi are... And Islam is the way to go. So beware. There are two great false witnesses. And there are two great true witnesses. There are two great false churches. 
Shia and Sunni. And then there's the false church, all the many different false churches in Christianity, which would be summed up with the other five churches uh, in, um, in Revelation, other than Smyrna and Philadelphia. So we have those false churches plus the two false churches in Islam, Shia and Sunni. And we have the false teachers and shepherds and Christianity or church, church, churchianity is what I say. And all the churchianity, the other five fallen churches out of the seven, they're leading all of you astray to the false Messiah, Yisha or Isa, Isa, and the Mahdi. If all the church leaders start to say, we need to switch to Islam because Jesus has shown me a picture that we need to switch to Islam, then that's all fake. That's the lawless one tricking the church. And the lawless one is also going to help the Mahdi and Muhammad and Allah, Azazel, Allah and Azazel are, I think, the same person. And Azazel and Artemis are the uh, Greco-Roman goddess of the moon. Diana or da Diana and Artemis, together with another fallen angel demigod, tricking everyone giving this fallen angel power to two humanoid looking creature people that will perform signs and miracles and Isa or G Jesus the fake this fake version of the Messiah is going to be giving permission to the church leaders to convert to Islam and it's going to trick even more so Islam, Shia, and Sunnis into thinking that they are in the right religion. And they're going to be so evangelistic, very, very passionate and moved by this fake Messiah, Isa. And how could the real Messiah, say, convert to Islam? I mean, really, how? But yet we'll have people falling out of the church after this saying, this is the answer. This is the answer. Because they never really studied the scripture for themselves in the first place. I hope and pray that Elijah and Enoch, Smyrna and Philadelphia, the true church, the two churches act like two, um, two witnesses, two candlesticks. But then within the two churches, we will have heavenly messengers come down, just like the two false heavenly come down, which is Isa and it'll be Isa and the Mahdi against Enoch and Elijah. It'll be like Moses and Aaron against the Janus and the and his sons, the magicians. And it will be it'll be it'll be terrible. They'll be calling down fire on each other and on the on the world. Every time Isa and the Mahdi do something, Enoch and Elijah will do something. 
Every time Enoch and Elijah do something, Esau and the Mahdi will do something. It's just like in Egypt. And it's going to be bigger and more vast than just Egypt. And the two churches, Smyrna and Philadelphia, are the true churches. The, the two churches that go through the fire. Some will be arrested, some will be treated bad, some will be m murdered, martyred. And then a fine number, just a small handful of people, will make it all the way through to the end. That's how bad it'll be. And it'll probably be people that live in the remotest parts of the earth. That live on the, in caves and tents and just remote villages. Living off of a, living off the land or manna, or both, maybe both. And so the two witnesses of Yahweh will be against the two witnesses of the devil. There's many names here. Jesus, Isa. If you're calling on Jesus and you believe that there's, there's no law, that he did away with the Ten Commandments and the fruit of the Spirit, then your Jesus is the lawless Messiah. The lawless one. And I don't care what you say. You can't get around that. If your Messiah, whatever, whoever he is, she is, whatever it is, preaches lawlessness, goes against the, the Ten Commandments and the fruit of the Spirit, or the first five books of the Bible where we get the word repent. Pent means five. Pentitude. Repent. Repentitude. Repentance. <clears throat> How can you repent <clears throat> if you don't even know <clears throat> you don't even know what that means you don't even know what it means how can you do it you can't and you call on the name of the Messiah Yeshua so he can lead you and guide you with the spirit into keeping the fruit of the spirit at least the Ten Commandments because if you don't keep at least the Ten Commandments and the fruit of the spirit you are not showing characteristic or fruit that you've been saved it's here you're going to have to pick you're going to have to pick what side the lawless ones or the lawful keeping savior the true Messiah, Yehoshua, Yehoshua, Elohim, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Yehoshua, whatever name you're calling, even if you're calling on the name Jesus or Jesus or even Isa, if they're not keeping, those, those names aren't keeping the fruit of the Spirit and the Ten Commandments, at least the Ten Commandments, or preaching at least those then you're believing in something that is not the true Savior. The true Savior would be preaching love, hope, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, to love your parents, honor and respect your parents, honor and respect and obey Father and the Messiah in heaven, keeping the day sanctified and holy, that is the Sabbath. From Friday night to Saturday night, try your best to make that a sanctified and wonderful day like Yahweh prescribed. The don't take the name of Yahweh or his ways and attributes and character and spin them around and say, oh, we don't have to do this anymore. We don't have to keep this name. We don't have to, we can go off of a generic name. We can go and rearrange and just say, no, we only have to keep a two commandments. 
And we don't have to keep the Ten Commandments. We don't have to keep the Torah anymore. Repentance is just two commandments only. And we get to decide what, 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 how watered down those two commandments are. No. That's lawlessness. It truly is lawlessness. If you had the spirit of, of the Father and Messiah in you, you'd be scouring the scriptures. You'd be studying over and over and over. You'd have this just passion inside of you to go through all the different lost books of the Bible, the ones that were kicked out by Bible societies and the church that didn't want certain books in there. Oh, we don't want we don't like that book. Uh, we that goes against our church doctrine that we made up. Now, how dare them to remove books out of the Bible and and to say this one's this one's elect and this one's not. How dare they? How dare they? And, and to believe in Islam or other religions that take books from the past and burn them so there's no record anymore. And write new rules, changing times and events and, and, and literally burning down factual, truthful, his, historical stuff and rewriting lies into the history books. Who does that? What religion does that? Islam. Even I think that it was the Greeks that came into Rome and burned down their libraries all their inventions, all the good things and wonderful things were burnt down. And then all the wonderful things of Greek was burned down by the Romans. And the, hist the books, the history books were changed. Over and over and over again. People used to believe in the 1500s that the earth was a great plain with a great vaulted sky made out of brazen glass up until the 1500s. Right around the name when, right, right, right about the time that the name of Yahweh Shuai was changed to Jesus or Jesus in the 1500s. Everybody started believing that the earth was a round ball that was out of control, spinning in outer darkness. And then eventually they changed the word outer darkness to outer space. Oh, it's it's not outer darkness anymore. It's outer space. It's not reserved for the angels anymore. It's reserved for mankind to explore this outer space. So many ideas in the 1500s. So many ideas that go against the truth. In the scripture, it says the earth does not move, but yet the center of the universe is moving at 1.5 million miles per hour. The sun chases the center of the universe at 600,000 miles per hour. The earth chases the sun at 60,000 miles per hour, and the earth spins on its own little poles at 1,000 to 1,100 miles per hour, something along it. I might be slightly off a few miles per hour. Garbage, garbage, garbage. You can have a little tiny earthquake and it's over. Your day is, is just ruined. How can we be traveling at close to 2 million miles per hour? Not possible. If we were traveling that fast, our skin would come off. You ever been on a motorcycle? At about 140 miles per hour, your skin starts flapping like a flag in the wind. If we were anything over 140 miles per hour, if your skin's not covered, it's just going to start flapping until it flaps off. There's no way that we were to stand still 
as a wind was traveling past us over 200 miles per hour, we, we would not be able to stand. Yet all these ideas were, were just exploded in the 1500s. A false name, a false religion, even Chris, Christianity took a dive because of the Catholic Church had this great awakening to change the name of the Messiah. And, and to create societies, orders within the Catholic Church that would eventually steer the Catholics and the rest of the church into some kind of farce, a lie. For the last 500 years, the Catholic Church and churches, and false churches, have been steering Christians into a fake, 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 false church that has grossly fallen away. So we have five churches that are fallen away. Two belief systems in the Middle East is within Islam, Shia and Sunni and they believe in a false messiah and so does those five churches that fell away they believe in a false messiah if those five churches which are two to three billion people convert to Islam with two to three billion Islamic people that will be five to six billion believers in Islam and that, my, my, my friends and folks, uh, fellow brothers and sisters in Messiah, that is a takeover. It's over. If two-thirds of the earth become Islamic, either Sunni or Shia, There, there's not too much left. Everybody will be a minority. Everyone. Really. I can even see people in Hindu and Buddhism and all these different other religions, their leaders are going to say, you need to convert to Islam. The Buddha is telling me this. The, the Hindu... All those Hindu gods we got pointing in secret. You need to start converting to to Islam. So you got all these false religions and false Christianity starting to point to conversion. Convert. Convert to Islam. And these two great false prophets... These two devils are going to have, like, their own disciples. It's nasty. All the false apostles that are out there now and false prophets and the false everything. There's only a handful of believers that believe like they're supposed to. And I prescribe, I was just going to read a little bit and end up making this long video. I prescribe to you to, to study Apocalypse of Elijah. Um, e Elijah and Enoch. Are from this book as, as I read it. They're going to come back. And the two churches, Smyrna and Philadelphia, are going to stand up. And it seems to me that the 144,000 are possibly the Rechabites, at least part of that 144,000 seems to be the Rechabites. 
and when the recobites come out, they're going to be possibly long-haired, very, very big like giants, and they're going to glow. Their skin is going to be radiant, and they're going to start talking, and whatever they say and do, it happens. Whatever they call down, Yes, I think to to match the two, um, when the Mahdi comes and when Isa, the, the false uh, Messiah, comes and says converts to Islam, there has to be a matchup. Um, Father and Messiah in heaven are going to send Enoch and Elijah as the two witnesses that represent Yahweh, Yahweh Shuai, Father Messiah. Then you're going to have the devil has his two witnesses, which are Isa, or the Muslim Jesus, it's a Isa, and the Muslim Mahdi. There has to be two witnesses. Then there's going to be many witnesses from the false fallen five churches and Christendom and then you have the two churches which is possibly the 144,000 and a, I've said in the past the two witnesses but a form of two witnesses as in we have two churches, two candlesticks which really seems to be um a form of two witnesses, but out of those two witnesses, there may be two heavenly persons that come down and perform miracles like Moses and Elijah, or Moses and Aaron did in Egypt. So, soon, there are Candidates for the Mahdi, uh, Sunnis and Shia, is Muslims are very are looking hard. We have a Yanaka in Israel, the rabbinic Yanaka. He's performing miracles and teaching rabbinic Orthodox Judaism. And performing miracles. I don't know. If this guy will. Start leading people to Islam. I don't know. But he's definitely. Uh, being worshipped like a messiah. To the orthodox Jews. So we already have. Antichrists. Of, of different religions. Showing up. Uh, performing miracles. So when you start to see Isa or a Muslim version of Jesus uh, showing up and performing miracles and telling you to convert to Islam and follow the Mahdi, then that's that's it. It's uh, off with your head. Beheading time. That's where we see who the infidels and the true followers are. And what I mean is, if you're a true follower of the Messiah, you'll be called an infidel. And if you switch and jump ships to another ship called Islam or some other religion, because you can't be a Christian right now, it's just too, it's too scary, then you're an infidel to the true Messiah. You have turned your back on him. It may come to one day where you have to convert to some kind of religion or order or government to keep your house that you paid for over the years, to keep the inheritance that was given to you, keep your wife and children from going into slavery. You must convert to Islam or we're going to take all your kids. 
or we're going to take all your cattle or your or all your belongings if you don't convert to what we say you must convert to our form of government or religion or both what if this inner faith movement it's all these different religions underneath one house and then it says Isa shows up the fake Jesus the fake Messiah shows up and says we all that are on the on the church on the Christian side um, you must convert to Islam and everybody in the Jewish side or Hindu side or all these different religions start to say these these church leaders of all, all these different faiths out there all at once started getting picked off and just every one of the religions of the world if they start slowly converting to Islam there's only going to be about 1% that would not be and that's That's like the the staunch believers of Messiah and maybe just staunch atheists that just will not believe in anything. I don't know if you can see the picture I'm trying to speak into your mind. Um, but if all these different faiths get together and they just slowly merge into a weird version of Islam then that's bad in a sense it's it's good but it only means that the time is almost over and we're going to see the true Messiah come through the sky and blow the heavens apart and shatter them down and to the earth and save his people. I strongly beg you and plead with you to read the book of Apocalypse of Elijah and read it maybe three or four times or ten times before you move on. And make sure, you know, that you get There's two books. Volume one, volume two. You have to get these books. You have to. I've given these books away. family members I've given these books I order them off of CBD or Christian book distributor or something like that I don't remember the actual name of the website but sometimes I get them for as low as 40 bucks and sometimes I don't and they're like 80 something dollars but I'm not financially able to just give them away to everybody. If I were, if I were financially able to do so, I would. Because I think every believer needs to have the books that were kicked out of the Bible. And you, with the spirit of the Father and Messiah in you, should go. You know, I don't think this book's inspired because I just don't feel the spirit of God, the voice and, and the spirit of my father and Messiah telling me this is true. Like sometimes when I read books, I can, and they're not even books of the Bible. They're just regular books. I hear the voice of my father and Messiah telling me something. Or I'll be in a conversation with somebody and all of a sudden it'll be like, boom, boom, 
boom or a tap in my head. And I was like, whoa. Like, I can hear Yehweh saying, listen to what he just said or she just said or what you just said came out of your own mouth. And it'll be like, whoa. We need to make ourselves sensitive to our conscience and to the voice of Father Messiah. And you, you can do that. I strongly suggest that when you wake up first thing in the morning, maybe right before you go to bed at night, you have a blank piece of paper and you write things that come to you. There might be some revelation or something that can help you even financially or, or health-wise by opening yourself up to writing down what comes to you. Been getting a lot of tremors lately, so I, I ask that you would pray for me, my neurological tremors. Um, I don't know if that means that uh, my time is is soon going to be over. I don't know if that's what that means. We all have a time limit on our lives. And if we do get to see the Messiah return, how wonderful. It'll be a terrible day. It'll be very terrible. But it'll be wonderful as we're filled with horror. We'll slowly have a warm blanket of comfort that will come over us. And that's the spirit of, of Father and Messiah telling us it's going to be all right for you. But if that blanket of comfort does not come over you, there's a good chance that you're not where you're supposed to be. And I pray that that warm blanket of the spirit of our Father and Messiah will come into your life now, comfort you, and none of the things that I have said will terrify you, but just get you ready. And please read the pseudepigrapha. Sure, there's things in there that are gloomy and oh, struck, powerful wrath, and yeah, there is. But there's some wonderful things in there that will help you get ready and understand and not be confused and tricked by the enemy. There will be a fake. There will be a fake Messiah, and his name will be Isa or even Jesus. And he will have two leprous spots on the back of his hands like he'd been pierced through his hands. Just like the Messiah said, look at my hands, they have been pierced. I think that this guy is going to have pierced marks on his hands. And he's going to literally come down from heaven and say his name is Jesus or Isa. And maybe even he'll say his name is Yeshua or, or, or even Yahweh Shua. Maybe he'll try to use the real biblical ancient Hebrew name. But he cannot raise people from the dead unless he's doing it with trickery. So the Messiah is going to come like the sun in the sky, brighter than the sun, probably a whole lot brighter than the sun. And there's going to be a big crashing and a boom. And people might say, it's an asteroid from Allah, whatever. It is Yahweh returning. And when Yahweh returns, he's going to come through the atmosphere. He's going to pierce this, the the, the sky and when it does it's going to make a terrible horrible sound and he's going to come with glor glory fire 
again, these things are just to get you ready. I went way too long on this video. Hopefully you stay to the very end. I don't say this much, but I, I would like for people to pass, if you do pass these videos on, please like them, please subscribe. And the only reason I say that is so that this message can get out to others. I don't really care for following. I do not care for likes. I don't do all this for money. I don't make any money. And I won't, will not make any money saying the things that I say and giving books away and free information. It was freely given to me and I will freely give it until I die. Again, pray for me, uh, um, my tremors, my right hand is really bad. I can't even hardly drink with my right hand or write or do anything in my right hand without it shaking real bad. And as you pray for me, pray for your friends and families to really see and hear the real voice of Messiah. You wish you I bless you. You wish you I keep you. Peace and blessings to you. May all glory, honor, majesty, power, and praise be to you, Father and Messiah in heaven. You wish you I you all him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Way. Have a blessed day.